Boy, it's good to be here this morning. I'm jacked up. I'm jacked up this morning. Hallelujah. Y'all happy to be here? Hey, online, you happy to be here? Wake up, y'all. Share the service. Get involved. Praise God. Uh, I've changed my message around. I'm, I want you to go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I, I won't preach long, but I got some great news this morning. I'm jacked up. You know, we, we, we separate four different teams. Can I tell you the gospel, if it's going to get out, it takes teamwork. And, and, hey, by the way, there's folks in this room. I look back at Dr. Kinder. I see you back there, Doc. There's people in your life, Doc, I'm not connected to, but you are. And you can reach them. I can't, but I think you can. And if everyone takes that mindset that you get the folks you're connected to, and bring them out the next four weeks. I believe we see great things happen. Amen, amen. And let me give you an example of teamwork this morning. See, it's all about the gospel. Amen. It's not about even being a Baptist. Right. I'm thankful for being a Baptist, but that's not what it's all about. Right. It's not all about these walls here. But everything that we are, it's because of the gospel. Amen. Amen. This morning, I, I had my boiled egg and I was eating and starting my 35th diet this week. <laughs> this month, this year. And I got a call from Brother Rich O'Brien. Brother O'Brien, was, he was jacked up, burdened, and him and Brother Sean was uh, together and they called me and said, I want you to, if you would, come to Brother Duck Underwood. How many knows who Duck Underwood is? If you don't, don't raise your hand. He's the fella that sits right behind Brother Bill right there. The Bill and I kind of got to know, and he started coming to church, and he's 90 years old, and he's never been saved. 90. He told his wife this week that uh, he thought he just... Uh, Go to church and walk there and get saved. That's what he said. But this morning she had a hard time waking him up. And by and I got there and Rich and them got there and Sean and uh, Bill Sammons. Uh, they woke him up and he does have a lot of fluid this morning and, and I could tell that. And, but he's in, he's in his right mind and everything and and I just, them boys uh, already talked to him a little bit, and we just did, we just led him to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, if that don't get you pumped, your pumper's broke. Yeah. Can I give you a statistic? That one person out of 750,000 people that are saved, are saved after the age of 75. So what happened this morning? That was a miracle. Amen. But I want you to know something. It's a miracle every time a little five-year-old gets saved, a 10-year-old gets saved, a 20-year-old gets saved. It's a miracle of God that he does the work of salvation. All we done was we went out and witnessed and gave him the gospel. But I want you to know he was ready for the gospel. Can I tell you, you got friends, you got neighbors, you got people around you that are ready for the gospel. Hey, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all better get ready. If you've seen what was on the news last night, this thing's getting close, boy. 
This so hallelujah. Uh, by the way, Iran in the Bible was Persia. Persia will be linked with Russia, and they're going to come down against Israel. That what you saw last night is just a start of what's going to happen soon. I want you to know something. You better get saved. You better get right. You better learn what the gospel is this morning if you ever going to have a chance. I just want to tell you why we ought to get active this next month. It's Romans 1.16. Would you go there? I only spent a moment. Man, oh man. Somebody's name was written in heaven this morning. I'm happy about it. But I want you to know, if you're here lost this morning, it can happen to you. I'm going to give you the recipe. I'm going to tell you what it's all about. I won't have a long time in the introduction, so I'm just going to hop into the verse. Is that all right? And do a little exegesis of this verse. Paul was a debtor. He said that early on in this chapter. I got to get this cross to y'all this morning. This won't be my most eloquent sermon, but I want to get this cross to you. Every one of you in this room, saved by the grace of God, washed in the blood of Jesus, sealed by the Holy Ghost of God, justified in his presence, you are a debtor. I want you to know something. You don't owe me nothing. You don't owe your neighbor nothing. But you owe God everything. He's the one that brought you out of the Mary pit. He's the one that uh, lifted you out and saved your soul. And you're a debtor. And you're a debtor to this world. We need to go out and reach everybody, everybody, everybody we can. And we ain't going to tell them about Mohammed because he ain't saving nobody. We ain't telling them about Buddha. He ain't saving nobody. We're not going to tell him about Mary Baker, Patty Anderson, whatever her name was. Amen. We're going to tell him the gospel. And I want you to look at it with me. I want you to get a fire in your heart where your preacher has this morning. Boy, I've got a fire in my heart. Look at Romans 1, 16. If you're there, say Amen. Mm. For I am not ashamed. That's got to be our priority. Not to be ashamed. You said, I'm the nervous kind of person. I, 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 I can't tell people uh, like you can. Oh, yeah, you can. Just tell him one. Tell folks what God done for you. You ashamed? You weren't too ashamed when the gospel got to you. Paul said, I'm not ashamed. Sometimes we, we're living in this world. We're so intimidated by this world. and We're so scared about what they're going to think. I want you to know we have the answer for this world, and that's the gospel. And we ought not to be ashamed. I don't care what their background is. I don't care how intimidating they are. I don't care how many spikes they got in their nose, their lips, their ears. I don't care how many tattoos they got. I don't care how much alcohol they've consumed. I don't care how much dope they put in their veins. The gospel of Christ is the power of God, and we ought not to be ashamed of it. Amen. Amen. You shall will not believe in the sovereignty of God, and those that are going to be saved will be saved, and those that won't be saved won't be saved. Ain't nobody going to get saved if you don't take gospel to them. I leave God's sovereignty with God. All I know is I got the great commission, and we ought not to be ashamed. Hey, you, hey listen, to me. how many right now know you're saved? Raise your hand. And you ain't ashamed. Wave at me if you know it. Wave at me if you remember when the gospel got in your soul. Take that same enthusiasm to your neighbor this week. Look what he said. 
he's not ashamed of the gospel. Andrew, I see you over there. There are a lot of people. They're absolutely what I call morons. Am I preaching? Because we have, uh, there's a lot of folks don't even know what the gospel is. I was talking to a, I had a little debate with a five point Calvinist. And I asked him, I said, sir, what's the gospel? And then he started telling me about the tulip, total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and the perseverance of the saint. And he said, that's the gospel. And I looked at him, I said, there ain't one thing of gospel in there. That's not the gospel. I don't believe in one point. Because see, one of you take one of them out of the way and the whole thing falls down. I'll tell you what the gospel is. Paul said it. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also you have received. I got this thing. And wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. Somebody help me preach. Look at verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received. I also received how the Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. How many of you agree with me? Amen. That's the gospel. Amen. It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Amen. That's it. Amen. It's not that plus speaking in tongues. No. That's not that plus taking a sacrament. It's not that and baptism. It's not that and turning over a new leaf. It is the pure preaching of the death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. And you say, well, there must be more to it. All there is in this verse. But let's define what the gospel is first. It's not any works you do. Ain't no goodness you have. That dear man we led to Christ 90 years old. He was laying on that bed helpless. I'm sure when y'all first got that thought, he was dying. But thank God. That's what the gospel's for, for helpless, hopeless people that can't make their own way. But it has a drawing power to it. Amen. You want to talk about drawing power? It comes from hearing the word of God this morning. Amen. Just something about it. I remember when I first heard it. It done something for me. Amen. Look at this next verse. Thirdly, it's the power of God. That, that word is... There's a Greek word, didymos. It's where we get our word dynamite. I'll tell you what the gospel is. It's the power of God. Right. It, it's what will blow the shackles off of you. Amen. It's what that has power to take that needle you've been using and that cocaine that you've been snorting and deliver you from it this yeah. morning. You watching that pornography. You've been hooked on alcohol. See, you want some kind of high. You want some kind of a relief. I'll tell you, there's one relief from sin. There's one power, and there's only one power, Brother Chad, and that's the gospel. I wasn't going to preach this this morning, but I just thought I ought to because this next four weeks is about getting the gospel out. Not telling you, don't go tell people you got a good preacher and lie to them. 
Go tell them you got a great God Amen. that has power to change your life. Yeah. If you're here this morning, got enough power to deliver you from whatever you're going through. Amen. You say, yeah, I've been told I'm hopeless. No, you're not. So here's what we've been doing. And I don't want to upset nobody. The Gospels, I know I'm going to upset somebody, okay? Probably radio audience or somebody. I get tired of hearing this, Chad. Just one, two, three. It's more than one, two, three. And by the way, if you say, well, you know, people brag about how many people they get, you know, they lead to Christ. What a farce. What do you think? You, you got some little holes, you know, in your belt of everybody you think you got saved? Because you just asked them, do you believe? Wait a minute. Now, Allison, you're nodding your head at me. It's more than that. See, ain't nobody going to get saved unless the power of God hits him. Amen. Now, I, 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 I walk out of here in a moment. You said, well, I just don't agree with you. I want you to know, if there ain't no conviction, Lois, ain't no power involved, if God's gospel doesn't do the work, then my manipulation and my sweet stories and me scaring them half to death ain't going to get the job done. They ain't but one thing going to get the job done, and it's the power of God in the gospel. Am I preaching? Yes. Testify, man. I don't care you interrupt me this morning. Help yourself. I'm still thrilled. How about you? Hey, he done took you out of a church membership when you thought you were saved and delivered your old soul out to him. Somebody. And by the way, there's a lot of church members need to get under the power of the gospel. Hey, Bob, you're not the only one. Hey, those folks that's life's never been changed got their name on the book. You're right. You're right. I agree. Amen. Amen. I know some of your partner starting to think, I wish you'd have preached on that other one. <laughs> I want to say this unapologetically. This might upset a few. I'm not a lordship guy. I'm not a guy that believes in some of that junk. But I got to tell you something. You ever get saved by the gospel? You're a new man. It changed you. Amen. I remember what happened to me up Pinch Baptist. Yeah. Had my polka dot shirt on. Thought I was bad. I thought I was bad to the bone. I went up there and told Bill Lamont, I said, somebody says something out of line to me, they're mine. I thought I was bad. Had a pack of marbles sticking right there. Polka dot shirt, afro. You said you had an afro? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I ain't got no hair now, but I had afro. I didn't comb my hair. I forked it. I went in there, and I want you to know everybody in that place was scared to death. They thought, Andre the Giant just walked in. But I'll tell you what happened. Somebody just testified about the gospel. It melted me, Lord. That's what folk need. They need to be melted. I, I dwindled down till I saw what I was. And oh, wicked, no account sinner. God's power done that for me. Yeah. And here's what I've done. Here's the provision. It's the power of God unto salvation. That word means to be delivered. I, by the way, I, I was delivered from my past sins, my present sins, 
and my future sins. You say, what's that called? Justification. <laughs> I was declared righteous. You said, you we- hey, hey, by the way, I still got some wickedness in me. Because see, salvation's not done. It's done on the inside. But still, I'm waiting on the redemption of the body. And when Jesus came, by the way, he may come today. Now, here's the procedure. I hope I'm helping somebody. Here's the procedure. To everyone that believeth. Now, I've got to deal with this word for two minutes, and I'm done, Chad. Chad, most preachers don't preach it like I'm going to preach it, but I'm going to go ahead and preach it anyway. I want all y'all to know that belief and repentance are synonymous. And you cannot believe unless you repent. And you cannot repent unless you believe. Now, here's what happened to me. I was going in this direction, young people. I was heading this way. Then I got blew up by the gospel. Hey, Reed, I got blew up, boy. And here's what happened. I was heading towards sin and what I enjoyed. And then I got blew up. And here's what I done. I believed the gospel. And I repented. And here's what had happened to me, Steve. And it happens to everybody. And I started going this direction. I want you to know something. I ain't giving you a nickel for what you have if it hadn't changed your direction. Go ahead. Am I preaching? It's the power of God. It changes your direction. You say, well, I'm still hooked on habitual sin. I'm still sinning. Ain't nothing bothering me about it. You ain't saved. I ain't say you can sin. I just can't. I, I say you can't sin without getting chastised for it. I, I want y'all to know something. You ain't gonna, listen to me. I want y'all to know something. I, I, I still got. I wish I didn't have it. I still got thoughts. Sometimes, I, James, this is awful. But there's some people that contrary me. They don't know how to act in church. They don't know how to. They don't know how to conduct themselves. They can't keep their mouth shut. James, I want to do this to them. I know I do. I want to shut the gas off of them. But I can't do that. I want to, because I'm still in this flesh. But you say, why don't you? As a new man. As a new man here. And you know what I do? I, I'm going to tell you, girls. You know what I do when I feel like I just felt? I repent. Because I ain't fellowship when I do that. So I repent. Say, God, I'm sorry. I don't know how many times I've asked told him I'm sorry. I'm glad every time I told him I'm sorry, he was there to say, I love you and I forgive you. Amen. And if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. Have you received the gospel? Hallelujah. I hope y'all don't criticize me for not having a note this morning. I ain't got nothing but the Holy Ghost. Are you ready to be saved? I tell you what this morning, Jeff, Rich will tell you, Sean will tell you, Bill Sammons will tell you. We didn't talk that boy into nothing. 
I just said, you want to be saved today? He said, yes, sir. He got saved. Wasn't no lightning, wasn't no thunderbolts. He just confessed the gospel and received Christ. And that's what I want y'all to do is go get everybody you can. And I promise you I'll try to bring the right messages like this one this morning. But with your head bowed and eyes closed, I want you to answer something to me. I'm not asking you if you're perfect. I really am not. Because I'm not. My wife will tell you I'm not. But how many of you know that you repented and believed the gospel and it changed your life and you know you're saved? Raise your hand. Oh my, if you don't know, don't raise them. Thank you. In this big crowd, how many in this room said the preacher right now? I don't know. I've never really had that happen. I've never, I've never really been saved, preacher. I look at my life, I'm not saved. I know I ain't. How many right now say, preacher, before I die, before the Lord comes, I know I want to get it right. And this morning, I sense the Lord dealing with me. How many right now raise your hand and say, I'm not a Christian, but I'd like for you to pray for me. Just sip it up. Sip it up. Yes, I see that hand. Somebody else? Hold them out. Hold them out. Preacher Smith, I've been thinking about this. And I do need to be saved. Just sip your hand. How many in this room just ain't sure you're saved? Names on a church book, but you're not sure you're saved. Just slip your hand up and say, pray for me. Maybe you made a profession, but it didn't do anything for you. And you're not sure you're saved. Raise your hand. How many's here? Say, I know I'm saved. But also I know I'm backslidden. It ain't right with God. And I want you to pray for me. I need to get the joy back. Slip your hand up. I see him. Yeah, I see that hand. Young person, I see it. You, you come and do business with God. Your friends will come with you. Others, just sip it up. Stand with me. Lois is going to sing after I pray. Young man, bring you come up and get renewed. Others, come up. We could, we could see something happen this morning. Father, thank you for Brother Duck getting saved. It was the power of the gospel. These two deacons called me. They had a burden. And Bill had a burden. But Lord, it was you. And I'm thankful there's still power. There's people here who are lost. I pray they'll walk the aisle. People backslidden know they need to get their life right. Teenagers who love, who, who need to get straightened up. God help them this morning. Jesus.